I first met Jay without realizing our meeting was the beginning of something new. What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> it started with the street poetry. Since Jay wrote his Dear Stranger letters and posted them on the street, and I wrote my poems and posted them on the street, we met to collaborate and wander Melbourne together. Go to the library and have a look inside. So we're putting up the, the collaboration of, uh, of stories of the same event. His style, my style. A few days after meeting Jay, we agreed to meet again, this time with R.C. Walden joining us. I'd seen Robin's YouTube videos and he and I had encountered each other online, but this was the first time I'd met him. The strangest thing was that it was as if we had all known each other for a long time. We could act naturally around each other. It was a relief after having to be this person or that person. The three of us wandered the streets and recorded everything we could remember about our encounters. We were three pairs of eyes in a messy city at a messy time. We stuck up some of our writing and did some recordings of our pieces back at Jay's apartment. Right. Good stories. Oh God, no. Strange, that is strange. And like this, we established a routine for ourselves. Read, observe, write, share, cut, post, audio. And this formula is technically the same one we've stuck by the entire time we've known each other. Yeah, no one's more Buzzing on coffee. Just said it so casually, too. I wrote, yeah. Speedy wall and a skip, but he'll dream of the snow. You motherfucker saying that. You need to keep writing your poems, <laughs> <laughs> Please don't, don't you stop writing those poems. Yeah. Which is what makes the thing so special. It's the greatest restaurant in the entire world. Yeah. What, what about this? What about that? What's that? It's littering. That's like a global phenomenon. That's why there's a globe over here. The guy's like, hey, you can litter anywhere. See, there's like, there's a tone over there. See, I can hear the heat kicking in. I knew these new friendships were going to shake my life up when Jay took us to text publishing to introduce ourselves to them as a collective in the making. Yeah. Right, I'll do the talking, yeah? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea what we were doing or why we were going to the office of traditional publishers. But actually, it awoke a strange, energetic part of me I'd been missing. That fuck it, just do it way of moving that Jay taught us. I knew something was coming for us. Or rather, we were about to reach some integral moment where nothing would ever be the same again. We had this stamped on us. This wasn't going away anytime soon. It was here to stay. The fuck you looking at? Jay had entered our lives in the jayest of ways, disturbing the quiet and dragging us along with him. And we loved it. We worked until late on an audio project, a collaboration called The Ghost of Gonzo. It later became the skeleton for one of the chapters in our book, There's a Tale to This City. No one in your right minds would want to wake up around 6 a.m. just to chase the ghost of Gonzo. Summer came to an end and we had already started the beginning of an entertaining project. We are arriving at Flinders Street. 
Jay was in Tasmania at some meditation retreat. Left to my thoughts, I began to feel flat again, like I was back in 2020, the year that broke me. Like summer had never happened and we were stuck inside in late winter. But I was committed to making this the year that rebuilt me. I wouldn't let it get me down because it was obvious to me I had things to look forward to. Jay had redefined the word fun for us. Robin and I met up and went around the city capturing stories, eating at French cafes, visiting a friend in their new apartment and getting drunk in a rooftop bar, enjoying life, taking everything in, living. The three of us reconvened in March. But that defeats the entire thing. Oh, look at this, come here. And we were back to our old ways. Observing, writing, filming, noticing the things that the average passerby can't see, sticking our pieces up on the walls for the city to read. Our brotherhood was growing stronger and closer. We had learned to understand and criticize each other's voices with honesty and depth. You're speaking too much French, I don't understand it. <laughs> we had plans. We just didn't know what they were yet. Our world was about to be spun around on a space giant's fingertip. The weather was getting worse, but our passions for learning and creating weren't dulled by the cold. Look at him. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Someone mentioned a movement, and I had no idea what they meant by that. Do they mean movements in the sense of the Gothic and postmodernist movements? Like the Beat Generation? This was absurd to me. We were just three writers having fun. This is my blood! But it was true. We had learned a new way of writing. At least, a new way for us. I wanted to see what would happen if we pushed a few buttons, so I jumped on the movement bandwagon, and very quickly it grew so much larger than us. People in other countries began sharing their Dear Stranger letters and street poems. Jay was starting a YouTube channel to teach people about street writing. Robin was moving into his new apartment, right in the heart of the city in its strange ways. And I was crumbling under the weight of university. We had to do something, create something, to kick off this movement. So we decided to write a novel. We already had the skeleton. Jay had his toilet paper diary entries from his time in the meditation retreat in Tasmania, where he wasn't allowed to speak or write. Robin had his diary entries dating all the way back from January. And I had my poems and some loose narrative pieces. Together, they formed a jumble of a story, but there was a shape somewhere in there. We set out to find the shape. We met Saskia, who helped us as a group find our own shape, our own strengths and goals. And then we kicked off and started writing, and we decided to document the process to show people that it's possible to create, and that collaborating with other artists is fun. We were in and out of lockdown. Some rebelled and protested. We the people sit way above them and they cannot tell us what to do. It is the other way round. Most kept up the good work of keeping the city safe. We did what we had to do to make this project work. Meeting up fully masked and keeping in constant communication. 
If we had let the troubles of the world get to us, we never would have completed the book later on. No, I feel so happy to have uh, Jaden here and we're learning together. Kill your darlings. Learn the other person's uh, way of writing. Learn their voice, their style. You're not coming in and changing what they're writing. You're saying, I know you, I know you would say this. Things were constantly changing. Restrictions, public moods, energy. While Robin had moved into his new apartment, both of us were balancing university. I was working and saving to move out of home and Jay was keeping us focused and committed to our project. We all had our excuses, but in spite of it all, we had a manuscript to focus on. I'm grateful for Jay. He gave me what years of education had not, a dash of confidence. He taught me that I should write fearlessly and truthfully, based on what my eyes can see. His mantra, fuck it, just do it, has really stuck with me. Any time I hesitate or tremble before making a decision, I remember those words and run headfirst into the fire. I made the decision to drop out of university, to pursue the now, to create now. Not someday, not when I'm qualified, now. Hey, hello! Ha ha ha! Alright then, we're just at Botanical Gardens, mate. Just, uh, yeah, do you, you, do you need to go home or do you want to come straight here? Just just call me when you're there, yeah? And then, uh, then we'll walk, walk up to you. Alright then, in a bit, have, have fun sleeping. Bye! We continue to roam and catch stories like flies in a jar, but most of our time was spent meeting in parks or crouching in Robin or Jay's apartment and smashing out hours of writing, cutting, rewriting, criticising and borrowing William Burroughs' cut-up method to create our novel. It was around this time that Jay's YouTube channel was starting to take off. Between him and Robin, there was now an archive of video footage of the three of us roaming the streets or working on our novel. But we still remembered to have fun and be young. Right, who's gonna do the spinner? One of you has to spin it. You can't spin it alone. Hang on. Alright, Jayden, get on it. Time was closing in on us. We had set out to write a book with little to no budget and in little to no time, since Robin and I knew that we had until Jay left Australia for good to have this novel finished. And like that, our world spiralled out of control and into chaos. Time was ticking. Things were ramping up. This novel became my first commitment. I was spending 30 hours a week on writing, cutting, editing, and giving feedback while also working in a bookstore. This is work. So. Oh, he does his. The audio, just get the first chapter. Today we're not going to do any audio. When writing in Robin's apartment got tedious, we'd go out into the sun and clouds and write before the rain hit. We were getting closer. We hadn't officially announced the book yet, but we had found its shape, cutting hundreds of pages of material and reworking huge sections of the narrative. We experimented with different orders and processes. For the most part, we wrote together, in a circle, in short bursts of 10 to 20 minutes, then shared what we'd done and accepted criticism and cross-editing before moving on to another timed writing burst. Oi! Oi! Stop filming! Stop filming! This is how we finished our first draft. And how we cut our second draft. And our third. Is it recording? It is. What's up? My name is John. <laughs> no, his name is John. So now we're on our last chapter. Yes, we are. Of editing. Mm -hmm. It's about time. It's about time. Oh. We brought all of our typewriters out here. Yeah, typewriters. Yeah. Typewriters. Yeah. Yeah. And we're gonna get it done. We're gonna go like pow. pow. Something flying above us. I'm feeling pretty good about things. I think that we're 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 on track with where we want to be, and we have a hell of a lot more work to do before Jay leaves us. 
which is going to break our hearts. But it, it is it is what it is. We we carry on. We're nearly at the end, boys. How do yep. you feel? One more chapter. It feels amazing. We're machines. Machines. You ready to get back to work? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's get this shit done, boys. <laughs> I was waiting for my chance to edit a project myself with my red pen. Although really, we all edited this book together. <laughs> Jay learned about editing and proofreading, style manuals and style guides, grammar and punctuation. I learned about formatting and experimenting. Robin learned about the power of collaborating with other writers. It was at the editing stage where the novel went from being a project to a polished piece of memory, a time capsule to show the world what we'd accomplished. With the book being ready for proofreading, we got to work on sharing details of our book with the world. We began shooting promotional material and revisiting key locations from the novel. We also had an audiobook in the works, and I recorded my part in a single afternoon, just before another lockdown was about to hit. When we went back into lockdown, we finished the bulk of the proofreading over the phone. Jay and Robin typed up our names. Yeah, that's us. We're gonna cut these out. Um, and then we're gonna stick it on on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to photocopy it. Let's do it. And at last, the novel was just about done. We had reason to celebrate, even if we would have to do it apart. I moved out of my family home and into a new house, closer to the city. If there was a sign that I was taking my life as a writer seriously, this was it. Jay visited me in my home suburb before I moved, and then Melbourne went into lockdown again, just as our book was finished. Jay, Robin and I had planned to sell it on the streets, like buskers. But with lockdown and rising cases, it didn't seem likely. So we changed our plans. Oh, what is it? Here. How is it? It's pretty good. <laughs> oh. oh, look at the back This of is it. it. Yeah. Our copies arrived and we scoured them for errors. It looks, it looks pretty nice inside. Like, we used a typewriter to do all the fonts. Even if there are errors in the final book, we are still proud of what we've achieved without help from anyone else. I never expected us to succeed, but we did. I never expected to be holding a book with my name on it, but I did. After posting one last poem on the street, it was time for us to release our novel, There's a Tale to This City. We launched our novel on the 1st of September through an Instagram live stream. This moment is what bonded us, was the moment that we were like, you know what, no matter if we can write well or we can't write well, we're gonna hell try. And we're gonna get in the, we're gonna get in the faces of every obstacle, of every challenge. We'll create our own chance, but we'll try. And I think between the three of us, we've hella tried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even a couple of minutes of technical difficulty at the beginning of the stream couldn't stop us now. We, we knew nothing was going to come of it. We all knew nothing was going to come of it, but we did it anyway. He's actually in our book, this guy, because all the stuff that we wrote about is all from real life. So a lot of the characters that you read about in our book, these are all people that we interact with. So people are asking, why can't I find the book on Amazon? So if you want to get the book... Yeah. Um, you message one of us and we will send you the direct link to Amazon because Amazon's gone haywire. We'd done it. We wrote, published, and launched a novel in just a few months. We're still in lockdown and Jay's time in Australia is almost up. We're ready to go back to work. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's get this shit done, oh, boys. Yeah. 
but I'm proud of what we've achieved given the circumstances. Yeah, he's just doing a drug deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just signed his life away. <laughs> a book really is a time capsule. It captures who we were when we first met and how we changed over the course of the year. And even with Jay leaving, three of us have no plans to disperse. We have more to say and more to give. But for now, here's our book, There's a Tale to This City. Available now on Amazon. We did it, boys. I need a drink.